Hi everybody and welcome to a new video in the audio data augmentation series. Over the last few videos you learned what's audio data augmentation, what are the different techniques that you can use, both from a theoretical perspective and then you also implemented some of them. But if you are in a production setting, you don't really want to implement all of the audio data augmentation facilities just by yourself, but rather utilize the uh, frameworks that are already available out there. So in this video, I'm going to review some of the different libraries that you can use in the Python environment for uh, applying audio data documentation to your dataset. Let's get started. There aren't many libraries that perform audio data documentations in Python or any other <laughs> programming language for that matter. And the reason is because, I mean, data augmentation audio is still somewhat not super explored, but the four libraries that I'll show you here are very, very good, and you should definitely take advantage of those. So these four libraries are Librosa, Audio Mutations, Torch Audio Mutations, and Torch Audio, specifically the Transforms framework within uh, Torch Audio. So let's take a look at each of them in detail, starting from uh, Librosa. So this is an amazing uh, audio processing library. If you follow this channel, like you already know Librosa quite well, because I use it more or less like in every video that I uh, create. It's open source, and as we saw like in the previous video, uh, you can use it for getting like time stretch and pitch shifting uh, augmentations. And it, you can definitely use it for offline types of uh, augmentation. Next, we have audio augmentations. This is a dedicated library to audio uh, data augmentation. It is open source. It has loads of different uh, transformations, both in the raw audio domain and in the spectrograms domain. Uh, it supports augmentations chains natively so that you can combine and chain multiple types of augmentations. You can do uh, all, both online and offline augmentation. Uh, that's because you can integrate with deep learning libraries like Keras, PyTorch, TensorFlow, but it has a disadvantage, which is that it only runs on CPU, so it's quite slow. Let's take a look at augmentations. So here you have the, the GitHub page, and as you can see here, you have uh, a bunch of uh, waveform transforms, for example. So you can add background noise, you can add white noise, you can add uh, reverb, short noises, bandpass filters, clipping, clipping distortion, frequency mass gain. So it's really packed with a lot of transforms uh, that you may use. You also have, for example, loudness normalization, normalize pitch shifts, and you should also have a couple of spectrogram transforms, so spec channel shuffle, so shuffling like the, uh, the channels in the spectrogram, as well as like frequency masking. So this is really good. The next library is Torch Augmentations, and as the name of it gives it away, this is a fork project from Augmentations. Basically, it's yet another open source uh, repository or like library. It's inspired by uh, Augmentations, and what it does, it basically focuses on PyTorch mainly, and the cool thing is that it uses GPU processing for enabling you to uh, apply online augmentation to your uh, dataset. It has a decent number of transformations, but uh, it's not as extensive as the original augmentation. So here you have the, the GitHub page, and uh, as you can see, you can see like a bunch of like different wave, uh, waveform uh, transforms and like adding background noise, colored noise, a reverb, gain, and, and a bunch of others. But it's not as extensive in its transforms as is um, augmentations, right? But the cool thing is that uh, people are actively working on it, so it's gonna grow. Cool. Now let's move on to the next one, which is Torch Audio. Uh, if you are familiar like with this channel, probably you saw like, my series on uh, audio processing with uh, PyTorch, and there I talked extensively and used extensively Torch Audio and also Torch Audio Transforms. So if you wanted to just like check that out, like that that series out, so I'll leave you like the the 
the link like to that up here. Now, Torch Audio is another incredible um, library for all things like audio processing, specifically geared for uh, PyTorch. And this is like an open source library. Torch Audio has a uh, framework or a section of it which is dedicated to transforms and in there we can find a few transforms that can be used for audio augmentation like for example time frequency masking time stretching pitch shifting oh, uh, it uh, torch audio supports augmentation chains and it's perfectly integrated with PyTorch because it's the whole purpose of this library is to work and provide audio DSP facilities to uh, to PyTorch and it also can be used for online augmentations uh, and of course it runs on uh, GPU so here you have the documentation of Torch audio uh, transforms and here you have a bunch of different um, uh, transforms that you can apply some of these are just like DSP generic ones other are more focused towards audio uh, data augmentation. Right, the question you might have right now is which library should I use for my project, right? Well, it really depends on the scope of your project. Here I'm going to give you like some advice, uh, just like take it with a grain of salt, but this is like the way I usually like, use them. So if I have minimal data augmentation needs, well, I'll be using Librosa. That's because it's Librosa, uh, it's a library that I use for all sorts of things like uh, audio processing, and then it's very handy to do data uh, augmentation with the same library. So most of the time, I have to say that I don't need to do like a lot of, uh, use a lot of transforms. So time stretching and pitch shifting is more than enough, and then I'll just be using Librosa. But if you are using PyTorch and you want to do some sort of like online um, augmentation, then I would definitely suggest you to use Torch Audio. But of course, Torch Audio only has a few um, transforms. So if you need something more when working with PyTorch, then uh, you should use Torch Audio Augmentations. But if you are really going all in in uh, audio data augmentation, then you should definitely use audio augmentations because this is the most complete library that you have up there. It's really, really nice to use and it's super powerful and it will uh, enable you to create very complex audio uh, augmentation chains in a very simple and straightforward uh, manner. Okay, but, and there is a but here, sometimes, you'll find yourself in a position where you want to apply certain transforms that are not available in any of these libraries. So what should you do? Well, you should just like, build those custom transforms uh, by yourself. And what I usually do uh, in these cases is I try just like to collate like different things. So I may be using uh, augmentations and then I just like extend augmentations for certain uh, custom transforms that are not available. So yeah, be prepared that if you want something very specific, you just like need to build it from scratch by yourself. Okay, so this was it like, for this video. Uh, once again, I want to suggest you to join the Sound of AI Slack community if you're not a member already. So here we have more than 4,000 people talking about all things AI, audio and music. And it's a very supportive uh, community. So if you have questions about how to get started or like something about audio data augmentation, so you can just like ask things there. What's coming up? Well, we are almost at the end of this journey in audio data augmentation. And the last video will be about using audio augmentations for building a very simple um, augmentation chain. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If that's the case, remember to leave a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not subscribed to the Sound of AI channel, please do that and help the channel grow. Cheers for now.